Robin Kirby Gatto. I am getting Facebook up and ready and going. So just bear with me as you come on today. And as God gives us an exhortation, amen, I am getting Facebook up close to get going. I'm just seeing where it comes in. There it goes. And we're going to be rocking and rolling with the rock of Christ Jesus as he moves us forward into the word in Jesus' name. As you come on here, be expectant and anticipating, saints of God, as God brings us into greater understanding, as he gives us an increased anointing of the spirit of knowledge, spirit of wisdom, and spirit of understanding, so that we can comprehend his word. Faith comes by hearing the word. And a lot of people do not realize that, that word hearing actually in Greek, the root word means to understand. So faith comes by understanding the word. Amen. And as you come on today, we are going to understand the word. Hallelujah. And be lifted up in the mighty strength of God's truth. Amen. It is so good to see you on here. I have YouTube over here and I have Facebook over here. So I see so far people coming on and all I can tell you is be hungry and thirsty for righteousness today as God brings us his truth. Amen. I see on Facebook, I see Barbara. So good to see you. Hey, Andrea, God's going to answer you. So awesome to see you on here. I see other people joining on on Facebook as well. God bless you each and every one. As you come on here expect, expecting, hey, Jacqueline, God bless you. So good to see you. And as you come on to, today, thank you, Nancy. It is so awesome. Thank you, sister. As you come on today, be ready. Amen. So as we enter into the word of today, I just pray that the power of God's Holy Spirit be in and upon you, that God open up our ears to hear in the power of of his righteousness so that we bear fruits of his love in Jesus name and as we comprehend the fruit of the love of Christ Jesus which we are anchored in very deeply grounded securely on that love in order to comprehend to understand hallelujah the revealing of the Father in his word so that we can see that God is able to do Ephesians 3:20. He is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can think or imagine according to the power that's at work and operation inside of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Hey, Sue Gailey. I also see, uh, I saw uh, Linda. God bless you. Thank you for being here, sister. Also, Mary, God bless you. Thank you for being here. So let us get moving today and let us get into the word of the Lord. One of the things that Holy Spirit revealed to me in great measure is is the process by which the Word of God is planted inside of us and that Word is bearing a hundredfold standing grain harvest. As we've looked at the core parable in Mark 4, and that core parable is the revealing of all the other parables that you cannot understand one other parable in God's Word unless you understand the core parable in Mark 4 which is the planting of the sowing of seed. I have done that teaching many times over on Facebook as well as on YouTube. And God has me bring that teaching constantly into most of my books because that is a core parable and it brings us greater understanding. Well, today I am actually blown away because God is wanting me to share something from my book from my latest book, Oscar Hall School, The Prophet Session for the Spirit of Knowledge, which is on Amazon, which I did not expect to be sharing, but he wants me to get into this teaching that is going to be Ephesians 3.20. And if you will bear with me and be patient, and if things seem to fly over your head, know that if you keep hanging on and pressing in, that your understanding will be opened and that Holy Spirit will bring supernatural understanding. Faith comes by hearing, by understanding the word. Amen. So let me actually pull, pull up that particular file 
Because God is wanting me to actually go into that brief teaching as we look at an awesome revelation of getting better understanding of God's Word. One of the things that you're going to find as you study the Word, again, I love the analogy that Holy Spirit gave me many years ago. And that analogy was of the ancient pathway. And he gave me a vision of this gate that led to this ancient path. And it's almost like the gate would open and you could go down the ancient pathway. And the analogy that God gave me, and if you can comprehend this, this will set you free. Because I find out more often than not that we get in the way of God's Word in comprehending and understanding it because we're trying to do it in our strength. Say so, God, if you're trying to understand the Word in your strength, you're not going to get it. And it's expressly seen in Scripture in 1 Corinthians 2 when you look at verses 13 through 16, which reveal that to the natural mind, God's Word is folly. It is only to the spiritual person, to our spirit man, that we are able to get understanding. And that is why some people will listen to the Word of God, to the revelations of Holy Spirit that come forth, and it will almost be like foolishness to them. Why? Because hearing of the Word of God comes by faith. To understand the Word of God comes by faith. It's not because you are so great. But now remember that faith equals commitment. And because you're committed to the Word of God, because you're showing up and you're reading it continually, God is going to bring understanding by the Spirit of His understanding and Holy Spirit. It is not by our power and might, but it is by God's Spirit. And so the analogy that God gave me in looking down those ancient, that ancient pathway is that I was holding on to these posts of the gate. And that every time I would get the Scripture, and I would read Scripture, and I would hold on to Scripture, it was as though I was standing at that ancient gate, holding on to the post, and I was peering down the ancient pathway. And as I continued to look at Scripture, read verse by verse, read this chapter, read this book, wherever Holy Spirit had me planted, as I would press into it, God would open up my understanding and He would flood me with so much power of truth that it was like I was holding on to those ancient posts and staring at that pathway that all of a sudden Holy Spirit just came up that path, hallelujah, and He brought the power of the Word. That is why you have to be patient. And many times you have to camp out at Scripture. Some of the things Holy Spirit is going to be revealing today is going to bring so much understanding to you to encourage you, to make you hungry and thirsty for the righteousness of God's Word so that you will study the Scriptures as never before. I only have three degrees, which is enough. Believe me, that's enough. But the degrees that I have are not in the Word. And that is why you can have no education in college. You can have no education in a specialty field. But you, by the power of Holy Spirit, can be taken into the Word of God and He can accelerate you on the Isaiah 35, 8 Highway of Holiness and accelerate you in the Word that you will be a true student and as God brings you understanding of the Word, you will feel like someone that is a virtuoso by the living God that is becoming an expert of knowing the Word. Why? Because it has been made alive in you. Now, I am just a hungry person, hungry for the Word. Even though I have two degrees, master's and bachelor's in social work, and I've done therapeutic counseling in all kinds of social work arena, and I have a law degree, those two emphasis and talents that God has given me has actually caused me to dive into the Word of God from those two mindsets in order that I am able to comprehend it and to get greater understanding of it, to dissect the Word of Truth for you and to bring you understanding as Holy Spirit gives me teachings. And a lot of people are not prepared for some of the teachings that God gives me. Although you get teachings here 
as you get them on Facebook Live, on YouTube Live, the teachings that God has me give you are deep in measure, but they are not as deep as the teachings that I do in God's Firewall School of the Prophets and God's Firewall Healing of the Soul. Those two courses of those two schools are actually taking you into the Word so deep that you don't think you're ever going to come back up for air. They are very deep. And what I tell people is that I imagine myself as a wide receiver and that God is the quarterback and God says, Robin, go study this. And it's almost like a quarterback throwing a pass and I just go out in faith wide in order to receive it and I study what God tells me to study and that is where God has me camping out to hold on to the post of that gate to look down that ancient pathway and then Holy Spirit brings me understanding of that particular scripture and so God is going to bring you a greater revealing of how to study scripture as never before and you're going to get so hungry and thirsty for revelations of truth as God opens up the eyes of your heart. But in addition to this, there's also a kind of caveat with it. What do I mean? Know that with this study of God's Word also comes another requirement. And that requirement is, is that you have to choose to not speak everything that God has given you. What do I mean? I mean, for years, God had me be quiet about revelation. He would not let me share any of the revelation He had given me. I was amongst awesome seasoned teachers of the Word. They would be teaching on the things that God had given me. And God said, Robin, zip your lip. And so for two years, He would not let me speak. Moreover, when Rich and I were involved with a business and were brought on stage for us to speak on stage, they tried to hand me the microphone and said, Robin, now you speak. And I would not take the microphone because God had told me not to speak. So when you're studying the Word of God, you also have to guard those revelations as pearls. Just because someone looks like they want to know the truth does not mean they want to know the truth. The enemy many times would put Jesus in a corner, so to speak, and would try to get things out of Jesus' mouth by asking Jesus', Jesus questions. One of the things my father taught me with so much wisdom, my father has got so much wisdom, one of the things he taught me was that if you get interrogated, having a lot of people ask you questions, don't turn around and answer it necessarily, but ask a question of the question or ask another question. You do not have to come out and actually speak what they're asking. That is what Jesus did. He did not speak to the evil of their intent. He actually spoke only what the Father told him to speak. So likewise, as you move into the Word of God, as God brings you revelation, you have to guard your pearls. And just because the Father gives you revelation doesn't mean you have to share it with everyone. You only do what the Father wants you to do. And you will find that many times for those that are in a prophetic training, a prophetic training, because they have the school of the prophets, and the school of the prophets are prophets in training. They are not a full-blown prophet yet, but they are prophets in training. And that is why God had me start God's Fireball School of the Prophets. And in the ancient days of the Elijah, and of Samuel, they had the school of the prophets. And the prophets, the school of the prophets, were merely those prophets that would gather, that would gather around those particular prophets. And those prophets would teach out of what God had given them. And so that is where the school of the prophets developed, especially in that era of Samuel and of Elijah and Elisha. We see the school of the prophets. Likewise, God is bringing His people together to gather together in order that we get greater understanding of the Word. What is awesome is that when I went to Thanksgiving with my in graces, Rich's family in Virginia, one of the things my sister in grace gave me was this cheese knife, and it said, gather. And I was like, God, what do you mean gather? 
And then I was reading Hobart Freeman's book that God has brought me to study in the ancient day theology and historical assignments of all the different prophets and the coming together of the different types of prophets, pre-canonical can, can, canonical prophets, and all the different prophets in the Old Testament. One of the things I saw was that he said the prophets would gather. And God said, Robin, I am confirming God's Bible school, the prophets, that the people that gather around that school are going to know the power of the word and truth. So what we're going to look at today is to give you a synopsis, a taste, a foretaste to get you hungry and to stir up holy emotions inside of you that you can't wait to open up the Word of God and to start diving in to get those words by Holy Spirit of understanding. Amen. So one of the things, as I mentioned, that God does with me, especially with School of the Prophets, with every teaching, but especially in stretching me with God's Bible School of the Prophets, as He began to stretch me and had me study subjects from school that I did not like. He had me study math. He had me study anatomy. He had me study science. These were not my subjects. I was not a science person. I was not a math person. I was a social worky person. I was more into that. And by the way, I ended up getting C's in English. Although I made A's and B's in other subjects. Go figure. God uses the foolish to confound the wise. And it is only His grace in me that is writing all these books. So God began to stretch my leaning upon His person of the Word and began to have me study subject matters that absolutely were so intimidating. And He assured me each and every time. He said, Robin, I'm going to show you the Word of God that is going to be Ephesians 3.20 that if you just lean on to me, in on my word, I will bring you understanding. And saints of God, when Holy Spirit brings the understanding of the word of God, it is going to be folly to your natural mind. That is why people will jeer at the word of God. Because to them, it will tilt them and it will just totally be confusing. But to those who are listening with their spirit man, know that the word is being planted deep and you won't comprehend it necessarily today or maybe tomorrow, but maybe in a few days you'll go, glory to God, that is what she was preaching about, about the word. That is where Holy Spirit brings to your spirit man the word of God. And as Holy Spirit translates the word of God to your spirit, then your spirit and Holy Spirit take it to your soul, your heart and mind, and bring you the revealing of that truth. And that is why you have to understand that it is necessary for us to look at the parables because in those parables is the dimension of the kingdom of heaven that is being made near. Now remember, at the end of last year, coming into 2018, at the beginning of this year, I told you, as Holy Spirit had me keep saying, that God was going to bring the knowledge of His glory and the revealing of the kingdom of heaven as never before in this year. And because of that, we would endure trials and tribulations that would cause us to be refined as gold in order to redound to our glory, praise, and honor when Christ Jesus, the Word, is revealed so that we could rise up in that strength, hallelujah, of the kingdom of heaven and bring that Word near that as we speak, we are speaking not on our own authority, but the authority of Christ Jesus, which is the authority that brings the kingdom of heaven near. Amen. So one of the things that God had me really get into, which again, I can tell you was intimidating at first is God had me getting into different subject matters in greater measure in God's Bible School of the Prophets. I've already written 36 books. I've gotten into anatomy, physics, mathematics, high-level mathematics, and all these crazy 
assignments that God has put me on, astronomy and more, physiology, all of these things that speak of the invisible God, Romans 1.20, and show us the very nature of the invisible God through the visible nature which He has created so that no man is with excuse. No one has an excuse when you go to meet God because in all of His creation, He has been having the message of who He is spoken throughout the world. Amen. So let us look briefly and again understand that in 1 Corinthians 2, when I am preaching to you, when I am speaking the revelations that God has given me, they are first and foremost because He has told me to. I do not speak anything, especially to you on Facebook and YouTube, that God has not told me to speak because most people would not be able to comprehend it and be intimidated initially and their carnal nature could rise up and they would just put a stop sign up and say, no, I'm not going to listen to that. I can't comprehend that. That's just over my head. Do you know that you have the mind of Christ Jesus? And if Jesus Christ, the Word, spoke everything into existence, there is nothing that is too far above your head unless you give the enemy power to put a board over your head, to put a ceiling over your head, that God wants you to dive into the depth of His Word, hallelujah, which is life abundantly to bring truth, to bring the power of the kingdom of heaven in order that you arise and shine in Jesus' name. So as I come on here, I do not share many things that are in my books or in my teachings that I write on because it can be overwhelming. So you have to comprehend before we even listen to what God is about to bring, you have to understand 1 Corinthians 2. Where Paul said, I came amongst you in fear and in trembling. I did not come with a wisdom of this age. I came to you and in fear and in trembling and on the power of God's Holy Spirit. That when he spoke the word, it was a wisdom, hallelujah, from above. That when Paul spoke the word, it stirred up holy emotions in the hearers of that word. And the best demonstration of that is like getting a match and lighting it up and putting it on other matches. It lit people up, hallelujah. And it goes further in 1 Corinthians 2. And it says that no one knows a man's mind except for his spirit. And then the word goes on further and saying that we, having Holy Spirit, who Holy Spirit searches the very deep things of God. Do you hear that? Holy Spirit searches the deep things of God, the things that are hidden, the things that have not been seen. He searches the mind of God and that we having the Holy Spirit are capable, hallelujah, of perceiving the mind of Christ Jesus, revealing who the Father is, not by our power or might, but by His Spirit. His Spirit that has come to our spirit and that is bringing the translation of revelation. And that is why when you hear me or when you hear another minister of truth, you might not comprehend exactly what we're saying or what we're preaching, but all you know, glory to God, is I feel good, hallelujah. I feel life. I feel the power of God operating, although I cannot comprehend it. And that is what Paul was speaking to in 1 Corinthians 2 when he talked about the hearers of the word that would come forth in power, that it would stir them up with holy emotions. And so I preface all of this that I'm about to teach. I preface it all, and this is the first time I've actually taught it live. This is the first time I've taught it in ever before. I've not taught this in a meeting. So for me, it's almost like having a baby trying to get it to walk. It might fall down a little bit because this is the actual first time that I am teaching it out of my mouth. So just bear with me and be patient. But God is prefacing what He's about to have me reveal to you. 
in order for you not to try to grab it with your mind. You will have a brain crazy feeling. Don't try to comprehend it with your mind. Try to be open and let Holy Spirit speak to your spirit man. Amen. So this is what we're looking at as God has me teaching you algebra today. I don't know how many of you did not like algebra. That was not my favorite subject in junior high. I was not big on math, period. And I was definitely not big on algebra. But this is what's amazing, is you're going to have an algebra lesson today that is going to be Ephesians 3.20. And you're going to look at algebra totally different than you have ever looked at algebra. And we're going to get into the Word of God, and you're going to see the Word of God as never before. Amen. So let's look at algebra. Amen. And we're going to get a revelation of truth as God brings us understanding. What is interesting, and this is what's going to blow your mind at first. Oh my goodness. It is absolutely going to blow your mind. Because God had me bring it into chapter 2 of God's Fireball School, the Prophets, session 4, the Spirit of Knowledge. So all this that I'm about to teach is out of that book, which is on Amazon. And we're going to get into the richness of the parables of Christ Jesus. Now, I'm not going to be able to teach all of this. But I am going to give you just a hunger in order that you walk into the deep places of the Word. Psalm 42, 7, where roaring deep cries out to roaring deep. We have to get our roots deep in the Word of God, in the love of Christ Jesus, for the present trial that we are enduring. We are enduring. And if you are in a present trial, this Word is going to take your roots deeper. It is going to yank you, woo, hallelujah, deeper into the love of Christ Jesus and the word of truth in order that you are sustained in this trial. A lot of people say, Robin, you are too deep. And I tell them, I can't afford not to be deep because the present trial I'm in requires my roots go deeper. And the reason that I am deep in the word is is because of all the trials I have endured. It has required, hallelujah, my roots in the Word to go deeper. So let's look at algebra. Are you ready to have the most incredible algebra lesson you have ever had? So algebra, are you ready? It comes for, from an Arab root word, jabara. Jabara, are you ready for what jabara means? Now this is where the word algebra Algebra comes from this word Jabara. Are you ready to find out what Jabara means? Jabara means to reunite and restore. Listen to that, saints of God. The word algebra came from the word Jabara, and that word means to reunite and to restore. Woo! Hallelujah! Can you feel the anointing on that math lesson? Woo! And we're going to get deeper in Jesus' name. So this word Jabara means to reunite and to restore. It also later in English was translated to algebra, which algebra means, are you ready for the meaning of algebra? Oh my goodness. It means the science of restoring. Woo! Hallelujah. Are you ready? The science of restoring what is missing and equating like with like. Now, I'm about to turn around here because this is getting me so excited when I think about the Word. It is the science of restoring what is missing. Woo! I'm going to turn around on that one. Hallelujah. Glory to God. How many of you need restoration of all that the canker worm and the locusts have eaten. Hallelujah. Joel 2.25 is God's algebra where he restores what is missing. Woo! Hallelujah. When he restores what is missing, but not only, not only restoring what is missing, but also equating like with like. Woo! Hallelujah. Now hold on a minute. Now don't y'all love algebra now. I bet
bet y'all wish I was your algebra teacher in junior high. Hallelujah. So here it is. And by the way, we are praying, and y'all be in agreement with us, we are praying that these books get into universities and people that would not come to church are willing to see God revealed through these teachings in God's Firewall School of the Prophets. So be in agreement with me, okay? Amen. Thank you. So here we have two components of algebra. The first thing is to restore what is missing. So that is part one. And the second thing is to equate like with like. So you actually have two different things when you're looking at algebra. First, you're restoring what is missing. And second, you're like. Now let's get two different perspectives of this before we go further in algebra. And God is going to bring you greater understanding, amen, as he brings us the word of truth that is able to cause us to go into a greater understanding of scripture, amen. So let's look at this and get revelation. God revealed to me in God's Bible, Healing of the Soul, I think it was probably about session 20, session 20, where we started getting into Job 28. And God had me dissect the entire chapter of Job 28, most of the Hebrew words. He had me dissect the words, do the letters, and do word pictures with most of the words in Job 28. He had that go on for probably about two or three sessions. And then he had us go from Job 28 to go to Job 29. Now, to give you a preface to understand this algebra lesson better, the first component is to restore what is missing. To restore what is missing. But this is the thing, saints of God, drum roll. You have to know it's missing. You have to know it. It's not good enough for God to know what is missing. He already knows what is missing. He is the infinite. He is the omnipotent. He is the omnipresent God. He's the omniscient God. He already knows. God already knew what Job was missing when he was about to go through the trials. But this is the thing, saints of God. Job the prophet did not know what was missing. And what was missing is that he took too familiar the presence of God. He had gotten too familiar with God. And now remember that Job was the most righteous man at the time in the land. So Job was very righteous. And in the midst of this, the enemy is coming in the Lord's, in the courtroom, and God is addressing the enemy. And is saying, have you seen my servant Job? God's bragging on Job. Why? Because he knows that Job is going to overcome the test. He's going to overcome the sifting. So God gives Satan permission to sift Job. We also see that Peter was also put into the hands of the enemy to be sifted as in Luke 22 when Jesus tells Simon, Simon, Satan has asked permission that all of you be put into his hands so that he can sift, sift you excessively. But I've already prayed for you that when you return, you will what? Strengthen your brethren. In other words, that when you find out what you're missing, Peter, and you get it, woo, hallelujah, and God brings the anointing, you will come and you will declare that strength to your brethren because they are missing it too. They just don't know that they're missing it. So Job 28, I love to tell people, is like the Job that you would not even bring into a restaurant. It is the Job. He's been in the mud. He's been in the mountain. He's been inside of God's holy mountain. He's got mud all over him. He is dirty. He is filthy. He needs to take a bath. That Job is actually the Job that we're going to look at briefly today. But then you have Job in Job 29 that once he finds out what he's been missing, then he gets it. Hallelujah. And he receives the grace. He receives understanding. So when we're looking at algebra, we're looking at the Word of God. The Word of God restores to us what is missing. And the reason the Word is tried and tested in us 
is because we do not know what we're missing. God knows what we're missing. And so as we study this word, and God brings the revealing of what we are missing, or can I say the deep revelations of who we are in Christ Jesus, we go through trials, we go through tests in order to show us what we are missing in order to bring wisdom. And so let's go to the end of Job 28 to get a little understanding of this process where Job gets an understanding. Hey, wait a minute. I'm missing something. And when you get to that point in your trial, praise God, hallelujah, you get what you've been missing. You get the power of Holy Spirit to bring it. Amen. So let's look briefly as we go to Job 28. And we're going to look briefly at these particular scriptures in order to get understanding of what God is speaking to us to give us understanding of what we're missing. See, you don't know what you're missing. I don't know what I'm missing, but I know that God's going to get me there. Amen. I know that God's going to bring me into his promises, which are yes and amen. Hallelujah. So let me move to that particular scripture. It's right before Psalms, and I'm flipping through the word. Now, Job 28, I'm not going to read all of it, but Job is in the holy mountain of God. He is just going through the dirt, and it seems dark. It seems hopeless. And then all of a sudden, he reaches his hand forth and breaks a piece that brings a shaft of light into the mountain. And he sees gold, he sees sapphires, he sees rubies, and he sees that in his dark trial, there are all these hidden treasures that he didn't have clue of, but it took the dark trial to reveal the treasures. Amen. So at the, at the end of Job, in Job 28, verse 20, Scripture says, From where then does wisdom come? So what is the reference here that Job is missing? What is he looking for? He's looking for wisdom. This is what he's missing, but it took the sifting of Satan to show him that he was missing it because he had gotten too close to God, gotten too familiar with the Lord, that he did not realize that he had actually stepped away from the presence of God in measure because he was not walking in wisdom. So let's look at verse 20. 20 of verse of Job 28. From where then does wisdom come? And where is the place of understanding? Is it hidden from the eyes of all the living? And knowledge of it is withheld from the birds of the heavens? Abate in the place of the dead, say, We have only heard the report of it with our ears. God understands the way to wisdom. And He knows the place of it. Wisdom is with God alone. For He looks to the ends of the earth. And He sees everything under the heavens. When He gave to the wind weight or pressure. And a lot of the, water, a lot of the waters by measure. When He made a decree... For the rain and for the way of lightning and thunder. Then he saw wisdom and declared it. He established it. Yes, and he searched it out for his own use. And he alone possesses it. But to man he said, Behold, the reverential and worshipful fear of the Lord. That is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. So here you have Job in Job 28, overwhelmed, wanting to give up, wishing that he had not been alive, thinking he cannot endure anything. And then all of a sudden, in his darkest trial, he discovers that he's gotten too familiar with God, that he pulled away from wisdom, and that wisdom is with God alone, and that wisdom is made known to man as we have a reverential and worshipful fear of the Lord. That wisdom from God, hallelujah, comes to us through that. So now as we look at this algebra lesson, as God brings us greater understanding, we see that Job was missing. He was missing wisdom. But it's actually revealed when he finds out that he walked in wisdom in his past as we look at Job 29. And Job 29 is like the Job that is on the front cover of a magazine. He is the Job that looks polished, that looks like he has it all together. 
But Job is reminiscing. The Job in Job 28 is reminiscing. And now he sees Job 29. He sees what has been missing has already been given to him. Or can I say has been restored. Woo! Hallelujah. So let's look at Job 29 briefly. And Job again took up his discussion and said, Oh, that I were as in the months of old, as in the days when God watched over me, when his lamp shone above and upon my head, and by his light I walked through darkness, as I was in the prime ripeness of my days when the friendship and counsel of God were in my tent. When the Almighty was yet with me and my children were about me. When my steps through rich pasturage were washed with butter and the rock poured out streams of oil. When I went out to the gate of the city. When I prepared my seat in the street. The broad place for the council at the city's gate. The young men saw me and hid themselves. The aged rose up and stood. The princes refrained from talking and laid their hands on their mouths. The voices of the nobles were hushed and the tongues cleaved to the roof of their mouths. For when the ear heard, it called me happy, blessed, blessed me. And when the eye saw, it testified for me approvingly. Because I delivered the poor who cried, the fatherless and him who had none to help him. The blessing of him who was about to perish came upon me and I caused the widow's heart to sing for joy. I put on righteousness and it clothed me or clothed itself with me. My justice was like a robe and a turban or a diadem or a crown. I was eyes to the blind and feet to the lame. I was a father to the poor and needy. The cause of him whom I did not know I searched out. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Do you get this understanding that now what Job has missing in his present day was that near walk to the Lord that he had in a prior day. So much so that the power of God dwelt in his tent. But he got too familiar with that visitation, with that presence, that he did not realize that that familiarity was causing him to be pulled away from that wisdom. That that wisdom made him the answer to everyone's problems. Why? Because God counseled Job and he took that counsel to others. And likewise, we see with us, we don't know what our present trial is trying to wake us up to. But one thing is for certain, it's trying to wake us up to what we are missing and what God is restoring. And just like God restored with Job, the revelation, the understanding of that wisdom, God likewise is replacing a greater anointing to be in and upon us. He's placing it to replace, hallelujah, what we have been missing. Why? He is restoring it because we know it. We comprehend it. We have woken up to our need. But now let's also look at as well, when we look at this algebra lesson that God is having us do today, and I pray it is so amazing for you. I'm not going to do most of it. I'm just going to do a little bit of it. I pray it's so amazing for you too as God brings us greater revealing of this particular teaching today. So you learned about algebra and you learned about what it means to, do, to restore what is missing. It also means to, res, to equate like with like. And this is where God showed me 2 Corinthians 3.18 that as we behold the glory of God with an unveiled face as we behold it as in a mirror, that we are being transformed into that likeness from what? Glory to glory. And God reveals that we are coming forth with likeness to likeness. In other words, He is showing us who we are like, who we are meant to be like. We are meant to be written epistles read among men. We are meant to be, hallelujah, the knowledge of the glory of the Word as we minister.
minister that life of that word to other people. So actually, when we look at 2 Corinthians 3.18, as we with an unveiled face behold the glory of God, we are being transformed into that likeness, into that image from glory to glory. That word image in Greek in 2 Corinthians 3.18 actually means likeness. We are being transformed into that likeness. Why? Because it's like taking this icebreaker and it's like comparing it with this. And you're and the enemy's trying to say, okay, you're like this thing. And we realize as we look at it, we're not anything like that thing. And God brings the word of God. And he brings us understanding. And he brings the copy of his word. And he says, no, you are like the word. My spirit is within you and you are like the word so he is equating likeness with like and as we continue to press in to comprehend the word god brings us a greater understanding so that we know hallelujah that we are like the word we have the righteousness of christ jesus we have the mind of christ we are seated with Him in heavenly places. And God has a plan to bring, hallelujah, restoration and to reunite. Now let us in. And one of the particular things that I get into in this other book. This chapter is very long. And I'm only hitting on two really huge points. And then it is so filled with other points through this chapter that I cannot even begin to tell you how much is in this chapter but god for whatever reason wants me to hit on these particular points so the next thing god took me to in this chapter he told me to start studying the newtonian telescope by isaac newton and newton created a telescope before newton's telescopes telescope telescopes were long and they only had one lens that would refract the light and put it all the way back to where the light was reflected to the eye. But Newton came up with a different telescope that instead of having to be many feet long, because most telescopes, in order to see out into the heavens back in that day, they had to be very long. One telescope was even 150 feet long. Now that is a long telescope. So Newton devised a telescope that was only four feet long and he did not put the eye hole right behind the inside where the lens was. Instead, he had like you would see a tube and you would be staring down into the tube. And what would happen is the light would come in and the images would come in and they would be refracted to the very back of that telescope where in the back of that telescope was a mirror, a mirror. And immediately, that telescope, as it receives the image in that back mirror, it takes it and bounces it to a smaller mirror. And that smaller mirror shoots that image up to the eye holder to where the person can view the image. So the image comes in, goes to the big mirror, that shoots up to the small mirror, and that shoots up to the eye image. And God began to reveal His Word of how that scripture 2 Corinthians 3.18, that as we behold, as in the Word of God, as we are beholding the glory of God with an unveiled face, we are being transformed into that likeness. And the reason that that telescope works is because of the mirrors. And God began showing me, Robin, what mirror are people looking in? Because the enemy will put a mirror up that if we are focused on that reflection, then that reflection comes back and attaches to us. That is why it is wisdom to not get in debates or arguments that you know that are not going to lead anywhere good because all the enemy is trying to do is to bring strife into that moment to attach his reflection of who he says you are on you. So instead of feeling like you're like the word, likeness with likeness, instead you feel the icy words of the enemy coming against you 
and it is breaking you down. And that is why you have to guard your heart. You have to guard your mind on everything you hear, on everything you take in, and you have to make sure that you only do what the Father tells you to do. So as we look at this particular telescope, one of the things about this telescope that made it work is that mirror was spherical. It was in a sphere. It was kind of like at a sphere like that. It was cupped. And although that mirror worked in the Newtonian telescope, another gentleman came and discovered a better form of a mirror that worked in the Newtonian telescope. And that mirror is called a parabola. A parabola. And that parabola is a mirror that takes light from all of these different Im uh, from all these different areas. A best depiction of a parabola is like those big satellites that you see on the ground to pick up satellites uh, to pick up different things from satellites. The things that you see on people's houses, those little dishes, those dishes are actually parabolas. That is what they are, and they take in either sound waves or light waves. And those waves go into that parabola and it takes that data and it breaks it up into a communication that can be understood. So as you look at that Newtonian telescope and that parabola mirror is in there, the images would be more crisp and they would come in more and it would take more definition of different size of light waves, whereas in the spherical mirror it would take in only one length of light waves mainly but the parabola takes in high light waves low light waves medium light waves and it gives you a fuller picture so all of a sudden everybody is now using the, the newtonian telescope and they're using parabola mirrors but this is where god told me he said robin i want you to go to parabola and i want you to find out a greater meaning of parabola so are you ready? Because this is going to blow you away. And what is uh, amazing is that while I was doing this, I was so stretched. I did not want to write this because this was making me uncomfortable. It was stretching me. I wanted to give up. But of course, God knows I'm not going to give up. So I didn't give up. But a parabola is used in algebra to restore what is missing. To restore what is missing. So what is missing is our ability to know the reflection of the heavens. Or can we say our ability to know the reflection of the light of truth of the word. Amen. But what is amazing is when I was walking one day over here in downtown Birmingham, there was a homeless man that was wearing a green t-shirt, lime green, and it said parabola. And it had the math equation. And I was like, God, this is blowing my mind. And he said, Robin, do you hear me? Write it. So I'm only going to get into a little bit of it in order for you to get understanding. But as you see those dishes that receive satellite messages or things that are in the heavens, that is the exact figure of a parabola. But when you look at parabola, it takes in the reflection of light. And so when we look at a parabola, it takes in the reflection of light of what we're seeing in the heavens. But this is absolutely going to blow your mind because parabola also comes from a Greek word. Are you ready? It comes from a Greek word. Are you ready? Let me pull it up. I'm trying to get to it. It comes from a Greek word that also means parable. Parable. And I was like, what? Glory to God. Parable? God, this is so much. You have got to help me. And God said, yes, Robin, it is parable. And what I am trying to wake my people up to is that they want to see the kingdom of heaven. They have got to look into my word as in a mirror. And they have got to fix their eyes on that parable. And as their eyes are fixed on that parable and they are still and they wait on the Lord, God will bring the understanding. Woo, hallelujah. He will bring Holy Spirit 
and he will open up the eyes of our heart and he will bring the reflection of the light of truth. Woo! Hallelujah. To show us who we are. To show us the kingdom of heaven. Woo! Hallelujah. Now this is where we're going to end, but that is only what God will let me give. Oh wow, Dana, praise God. This is the only information that God will let me give out of this whole teaching. Like I said, this teaching I think is about 50 about 50 pages. It is a long teaching in my last book. But let me end as I end with reading one of the things out of out of this uh, one of the sections, the excerpts out of this. After we find out the root of the parabola, because when you find the root of, of a parabola in algebra, you're trying to find the focus point. And when you find the focus point, so let's say you've got like a dish shape parabola like that. It almost looks like a wide U. You've got to find the focus point. And whatever's the focus point becomes the vertex. And whatever is in the vertex, are you ready? Has a mirrored reflection. It has a mirrored reflection that as it is on this side of the parabola, it is on this side of the parabola. Or can I say, when your focus is on the Word and you see the likeness of the Word, hallelujah, over here, the likeness of the Word is reflected in you over here. Woo! Hallelujah. Does that not fire you up? So let me end as I end with this particular excerpt. Everything about a parabola speaks of being mirrored, revealing the restoration of what is missing, which is the likeness. Likeness is determined by having two sides rooted on a firm foundation, receiving the focus of the light. Just wow. When we come to know our likeness to the image of the glory of God revealed in Christ Jesus, we are then being restored to what God has destined us to be. Glory to God. Do you see this, saints of God? God has a destiny for you. He wants to bring you into the call, but it requires us to know what we are missing. It took David 14 to 16 years to find out what was missing. It took Joseph 14 years to find out what was missing. Saints of God, God is not concerned on how fast we get there. He's concerned on the process of us getting there and of us knowing what we are missing. Because when we know what we're missing, hallelujah, He can add unto us, hallelujah, the glory of His nature, revealing the word of truth to bring understanding in Jesus' name. So I pray that you enjoyed this Facebook Live, this YouTube video, and I pray the Lord has blessed you, and I pray in the name of Jesus that God opens up the eyes of your heart, gives you knowledge, wisdom, and understanding in order to comprehend His Word, to know the knowledge of His glory and the likeness of that glory which He has brought you unto, and that God will reveal all that has been missing, that you have not apprehended, and that God will accelerate you on the highway of holiness so you can apprehend, hallelujah, what is missing, and you can walk into the call in the likeness of Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen, hallelujah. And for those of you who have my books, please give me reviews on Amazon if you have any of my books. You can give me a review because that actually bumps me up on Amazon and it makes them put my book out in front of other people who would not get out. I actually have this last book in the secular arena. I have it under stress management and I am praying that God gets this book of the anatomy of the brain that has this teaching that I just gave you. I pray he gets it before people's hands that have not been saved, that are backslidden, in order to bring them closer to the cross of Christ Jesus. Thank you, Sue Gailey. And I have just been finishing up chapter one of my latest book, Destiny, and was in almost tears yesterday 
reading chapter one to Rich. This book, Destiny, is going to be like at his feet, and you're going to see, that's Matthew with his energy, energy drink back there. You're going to see Destiny, and you're going to see uh, where the first chapter is a fictional story, and then chapter two brings in the teachings, and at the end of each chapter is going to be another fictional part of the story.